be like, oh, and it would shoot off on a string, and it would fucking like he'd hit people with it, and then reattach it back on. It would be like, you want to see my own fist? I watched him do this all night. Pissed the, the Red Sea, so he definitely pissed a couple regulars off. We did not find it as funny as the rest of us. Did, but it's also fucking Bob, like touch Bob, see what happens. Like, yeah. fucking love that dude. That's what I was saying, like, when the first time I met him, he's like, got himself attached to a fence, like, all his spike bracelets. Fence. A fence. And he's like, help! Help! Help me! We're all just like... <laughs> Holy you shit, go help him. Bob, Bob stuck for a second, we're gonna fucking leave him there. Right? Yeah, we, we're just, we, we just sat around and drank beer and watched. Just going, no, 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 no. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> How long will he chew his arm off? <laughs> he did a very skinny arm, he wouldn't have taken too long. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Baker. Oh, when Baker first moved to Minneapolis, he came over to my house and he's like, man, I met some fucking weirdo named Bob Murderer yesterday. <laughs> and like, I'm so fucking hungover. I have butane all night with this dude. And I couldn't understand a fucking word he said. <laughs> oh my God. I, I got another one. So while I'm locked up, like I told everybody fucking, if you ever get to Minneapolis, Tell them you know me or whatever, and oh, they're taking yeah, all garbage. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Go to the Triple Rock, and you'll get free booze. Yeah, yeah. So finally, a buddy of mine comes up from fucking Texas, goes to the Triple Rock, and then he's like, he's telling me about it. He's like, I went to the Triple Rock, and I found the oldest fucking punk rock dude I could find, and I'm like, I'm on the phone, I'm like, Bob Murder. He's like, Yeah, his name was Bob Murder. He's like, And then. The fucker made me buy him drinks all night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, you fucking lied. Yeah. <laughs> One time I was driving my taxi and I picked up this couple at Palmer's and they were up from Bemidji. 
and I'm driving them to a hotel in Spring Lake Park, and they're like, are you in a punk rock? You look like you are, and I'm like, yeah. Last time we were in town, we were at Palmer's, and some guy named Bob Murderer was there. He was the most interesting, strangest person I ever met. And we hung out with him all night, but then he tried to come back to our hotel and party with us, and we were like, yo, no, you gotta stop, man. Did you ever get to tell Bob was obsessed with anybody had a round head, and you call him, you got a baby head? Baby, oh yeah. I got, did you get a baby head? I'm gonna bite your head like an apple. Exactly! <laughs> your baby head! <laughs> Face like a baby, you know? And then he threw up in the trash. I have a picture of it. Black and white. Like, you look like a baby! <laughs> so I have a picture of him puking at the box holder. Black and white. Nice. Black and white.
<laughs> Sounded just like it though. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm not smart. laughs> hey, you hate me. <laughs>
Pretty Norman in fucking 20 seconds. Uh, 20 seconds, live fast, die punk. <laughs> <laughs> That's only 20 seconds I can give you. <laughs> Even though I'm 42, I'm not gonna live. How old are you? Uh, 22. No, 42. <laughs> oh, careful, buddy. Uh, you're a baby. She's calling me a baby. You're a baby. Well, how old are you? 31, but you're still a baby. Dude, I'm older than her, and I'm still a baby. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're a puppy. Why was it bomb shelter? It was uh, 94 to 97, was a fucking punk rock scene that fucking rivaled anything in the 80s. It was DOI, there was no clicks, there was no, everyone just, you were different, you did whatever, it didn't matter if you were punk, crop, I mean, Why was it so important though? Like, it was important because it was a social outlet where kids had somewhere to go. Kids that were disenfranchised. They, you know, they could be themselves, they could look as weird and crazy as they wanted to. And every weekend there was a show. I mean, sometimes there was shows during the week, but it didn't matter if it was straight edge, pop punk, everyone went. It was our little community that we created for us. There was no rock star attitude, there was no bullshit. Once in a while you got a little scuffle, someone had a disagreement, but when does that doesn't happen in a normal society, you know? Like, you probably have more fights in a jock bar than you do, like, whatever. But 94, 97, man, it was awesome, it was exciting, and the whole bomb shelter riot is like, it's like a footnote in the history of Minneapolis punk rock, and that place, because it, it, it should be documented, it's gonna go down in history, you know? Why do you stay here now? Why do I stay here now? Because there is a DIY community here. I don't feel like in a lot of towns there's a DIY community. I'm from Southern California, and I go, to, uh, and I go there, but I feel disconnected. It's all suburbs, and it's not like DIY. I mean, it, you have to search out that niche, but here there's so much DIY, so much like, I mean, not even just in punk rock, but like in movies, like in writing, like in art, theaters. If you are artistic and you can, you're able to express yourself, have DIY here, and you can make your roots. And so many people get leave here and they try to go to LA and whatnot, and they come back here because it's dog eat dog or on the West Coast, you know, the East Coast. And it's like here you can make a name for yourself and you can become known, and it's like everyone will support you. But when you go to a major city, no one's gonna support you. Because everybody else and their brother is doing that shit. And that's why I stay here, because you can do, you know what I'm saying? And there's certain people that live here that are cartoon characters, or like, you know, they have like, Bob Murderer, you know? He's 45 years old, looks about 90, but people, yeah, he does. people love him, yeah. you know? And he's a, he's a Minnesota institution, even though he never born here, but he moved here in 95, but that's the way it is here. He, you know, like, you can be, make yourself here. Like, look at the hip hop, the underground hip hop here. It's thrives, it's phenomenal. It's all you know, across the country now, but like. What's big for hip hop here? Like, the whole atmosphere and Fifth Element and Doom Tree, you know, it's not my cup of tea, you know, like I like, but it, you know, and Brother Ali, for instance, but, you know, like, it's like how Epitaph was back in the, um, 80s, they started with Bad Religion, and they grew and became a major label, you know? That's how Rhyme Sayers, the whole label, and Fifth Element, they started independent, going like, there's that now. Look out. Yeah, 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 you know, and it's like, there's a lot of shit in Minneapolis, and it's not just punk rock, it's everything, you know? And it's like, you know, it's like, people can be, themselves and they can make a niche for themselves and it's not cutthroat, it's not die or die, they'll have people that support them and they'll get contacts. It doesn't matter who you are, you, you could be from here or not from here, but you connect with the right people and there's so many resources here that people think they have to live in New York, or, but a lot of bands. What are you doing today, brother? What are you doing today, brother?
Minneapolis. We came from the darkest depths of fucking Chicago with heavy hearts and heavy fucking drinks. We mourn your loss. It's been a bitch of a fucking year and a half that nobody needed this. Lost two good brothers. This shirt's for them. Fucking have it. Right. Cheers, fuckers. Let's go!